Live from Boston, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Chief Data Officer Summit. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the IBM CDO Summit here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Paul Gillen. We have two guests for this, uh, this session. We have Rebecca Shockley, she is the Executive Consultant at IBM Global Business Services, and Alfred Essa, Vice President Analytics and R&D at McGraw-Hill Education. Rebecca and Alfred, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thank so I'm going to start with you, Rebecca. Uh, you're giving a speech tomorrow about the AI ladder. I know you haven't finished writing it. <laughs> <Shh, laughs> don't. Yeah. We, uh, you're, you're, you're giving a speech about the AI ladder. Right. What is the AI ladder? So when we think about artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence, um, you know, it's very pervasive. And we're starting to see it a lot more in the organization, in organizations. But the AI ladder is basically says that you need to build on a foundation of data so that data and information architecture is your first rung, and with that data, then you can do analytics, next run, move into machine learning once you're getting more comfortable, and that opens up the whole world of AI. And part of what we're seeing is organizations trying to jump to the top of the ladder or scramble up the ladder really quickly and then realize they need to come back down and do some foundational work with their data. Um, you know, I've been doing data and analytics with IBM for 21 years, and data governance is never fun, and it's hard, and people would just as soon go do something else than do data governance, data security, data stewardship, and especially as we're seeing more business side use of, of data. So data's, when I started my career, data was very much an IT thing, right? And part of my early career was basically just getting IT and business to communicate in a way that they were saying the same things. Well, now you have a lot more um, self-service analytics and business leaders, business executives making software decisions and various decisions that impact the data without necessarily understanding the ripples that their decisions can have throughout the data infrastructure because that's not their forte. So, right? so what's the what's the outcome? What's the result of this? Well, you start to see organizations. It's similar to what um, we saw when organizations first started making data lakes. Right, um, the whole concept of a data lake, very exciting, interesting. Getting all the data in, a, in together, and whether it's virtual or or physical, um, and. Uh, what ended up happening is without proper governance, without proper measures in place, you ended up with a data swamp instead of a data lake. Things got very messy very quickly, and instead of creating opportunities, you were essentially creating problems. And so what we're advising clients is you really have to make sure that you're focused on taking care of that first rung, right? Your data architecture, your information architecture, and treating the data with the respect as a strategic asset that it is, and um, making sure that you're dealing with that data more in a proper manner, right? So basically telling them, yes, we understand that's fun up there, but come back down and deal with your foundation. And for a lot of organizations, um, they've never really stepped into data governance, so um, because Again, data isn't what they think makes the company run, right? So banks are bankers, not data people. But at the same time, how do you run a bank without data? Well, exactly, and I want to bring you into this conversation, Alfred, as, as, as McGraw-Hill, a company that is climbing the ladder <laughs> in a steady, in a more He's steady fashion. What's your approach? How, how do you think about bringing your teams of data scientists together to, to work to improve the company's bottom line, to enhance the customer experience. Talk to our yeah, for, about first that. I'd sort of like to start with uh, laying some of the context of, of what we do. So McGraw-Hill Education has been traditionally a textbook publisher. We've been around for over 100 years. I started with the company over 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you um, aged well. <laughs> uh, but 
No, we no longer think of ourselves as a textbook publisher. Uh, we're in the midst of a massive digital transformation. Uh, we started that, that journey over five years ago. So we think of ourselves as a uh, software company. So we're trying to create intelligent software based on smart data. Uh, but it's not just about software and AI uh, and, and data. Uh, when it comes to education, it's a tale of two cities. Uh, this is not just the U.S., but internationally, right? Uh, uh, used to be we were born, went to school, got a job, raised a family, retired, and then we died. Uh, <laughs> well, now education is not episodic. People need to be educated. It's lifelong learning, right? Uh, and that's its survival, but also flourishing. Uh, so that, that's created a massive problem and a challenge. Uh, so it's a tale of two cities. By that I mean uh, there's an incredible opportunity to apply technology, uh, AI. Uh, we see a lot of potential uh, in, in the new technologies. Uh, but it's, so in that sense, it's the best of times. The worst of times is we, we're faced with massive problems. There's a lot of inequity. We need to educate uh, uh, people who have largely been uh, neglected. Uh, so that, that's the context. Uh, so I think in now answering your question about data science teams, uh, first and foremost, we like to get people on the teams excited about the mission. Know, mission, it's like, w w what are we trying to achieve? What, what's the problem uh, that we're trying to achieve? Uh, and I think the best uh, uh, employees, uh, including data scientists, uh, they like solving hard problems. And so the you know, first thing that we try to do is, it's not what skills you have, but do you like solving really, really hard problems? Uh, and then taking it next step, I think the exciting thing about uh, data science is uh, it's an interdisciplinary field. It, it's, it's not one skill, but you need to bring together a combination of skills. And then you also have to excel uh, and have the ability to work in teams. Uh, you said that a AI has potential to, to uh, improve the education process. Now, people have only so much capacity to learn. How can AI accelerate that process? Yeah, so uh, if we, stand back a little bit and look at the traditional model of education. Now, it, there's nothing wrong with it, but it, it was successful for a certain period of years and it, work, and it works for some people. Uh, but now, the need for education is universal and, and lifelong. So, uh, what our basic model, current model of education is lecture mode and testing. Right. Uh, now from a learning perspective, learning science perspective, all the research indicates that that doesn't work. It might work for a small group of people, but it's not universally applicable. Right. So uh, what we're trying to do, and this is the promise of uh, AI, it's not AI alone, but I think this is a big part of AI. What we can do is begin to customize and tailor the education uh, to each individual specific needs. Uh, and just to give you one quick example uh, of that. Different students come in with different levels of prior knowledge. Not everyone comes into a class or a learning experience knowing the same things. Uh, so what we can do with AI is uh, determine very, very precisely, uh, just think of it as a brain scan of what is it each student need to know uh, at every given point in time. And then based on that, we can determine also, this is where the models and algorithms uh, are, what are you ready to learn next? And what you might be ready to learn next and what I might be ready to learn next is going to be very different. And then uh, so our algorithms also help route delivery of uh, information and knowledge uh, at the right time to the right person uh, and, and so on. I mean, you're, you're talking about these massive social challenges. I mean, education, as 
you know, solving global inequity. And not every company has maybe such a high-minded <laughs> purpose. I mean, but but does it take that kind of mission, that kind of purpose, to to unite employees? I mean, what both of you? I mean, I'm, I'm interested in your perspectives here. I don't think it takes you know a mission of solving global education. Yeah. I do firmly agree with what Al said about people need a mission. They need to understand the outcome and helping organizations see that outcome as, as being possible um, gives them that rally point. So I don't disagree. I think everybody needs a mission to work towards, but it doesn't have to be you want to extract hunger. that mission to a higher level than exactly. making the world a better place. Exactly, or at least your little corner of the world. Um, and again, what we're seeing, the difficulty is helping business leaders or consumers or whomever understand how data plays into that, right? So um, you may have a goal of we want better relationship with our customer, right? And at least folks of my age think that's a personal one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. Understanding who you are, I can find that much more quickly by looking at all your past transactions and all of your past behaviors and whether you click this or that. And, um, and you should expect that I remember things from one conversation to the next. And helping people understand that, you know, helping the folks who are doing the work understand that the outcome will be that we can actually treat our customers the way that you want to be treated um, as a person gives them that sense of purpose and helps them connect the dots better. One of the big challenges that we hear CDOs face is, is getting buy-in. And what you're proposing about your, your, this new model really appending the old sage on the stage model, I mean, well, what, is there a lot of pushback or is, is, it, is it difficult to get the buy-in and, and all stakeholders to be on the same page? Yeah, it is. I think it's doubly difficult. Uh, uh, the, the way I think about it is uh, uh, it's like a, a shift change in hockey where you have one shift that's on the ice and another one that's about to come on the ice, that's a period of uh, maximum vulnerability. Uh, <laughs> that's where a lot of goals are scored, uh, people get upset, start fighting. That's hockey. That's what you do. But uh, organizations uh, and companies are faced with the same challenge. It's not that they're resisting change. Uh, many companies are, have been successful with one business model while they're trying to bring in a new business model. Now, now, you can't jettison the old business model because often that's paying the bills. That's the source of the revenue. So the, the real challenge is how are you going to balance out these two things uh, at the same time? So that, that's doubly difficult, right? I want to ask you quickly because we have to, yeah. to end here, but uh, the, there's a terrible shortage of cybersecurity professionals data science professionals, the universities are simply not able to keep up with demand. Do you see the potential for AI to step in and fill that role? Uh, I, I don't think technology will, by, by itself, will fill that role. I think there, there is a deficit of talented people. I, I think what's going to help fill that is getting people excited about really large problems that can be solved with, with this technology. With this technology, I think. Actually, I think the talent is there. What I what I see is, uh, uh, I think we need to do a better job of bringing more women, other diverse groups into the mix. Uh, there, there are a lot of barriers uh, for in diversity and bringing talented people. I think they're out there. I think we could do a much better job with that. Recruiting them. Great. Alfred, Rebecca, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much thanks for having so much. us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Paul Gillen. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of the IBM CDO Summit here in Boston coming up in just a little bit.